right, we are back for another episode. Um, so excited, as always, here. Uh, focus on EDU, EdTech, and the education experience. My name is Doug Conopelko from CDW Education. And, you know, we don't get a lot of repeat offenders here on the show, but I'm excited to bring back Dr. Emily Bell from Fulton County Schools. Um, she's working on some really new and exciting things there. And we thought, you know, perfect time to uh, bring you back in and have a conversation again. So uh, just give us a quick intro, you know, name, role, a little bit about your background in education. Yes, well, Doug, happy to be here with you again as a repeat offender. Always enjoy our time together. I am Emily Bell, Chief Information Officer of Fulton County Schools. We're right in the Atlanta metro area. We have right around 90,000 students and about 110 buildings. So as an IT leader, um, it is quite a challenge for that size. What's the total, what's the total user count then? Because 90,000 students alone is a big number, but then you've got a lot of staff. So what does that bring you up to? Yeah, 90,000 students and about 14,000 staff members. So well over 100,000 when we're looking at the ping power and pipe issues uh, that we need to make sure our uh, constituents have access. Uh, but that's not the only thing I do here, Doug. I have a lot of other departments under my supervision. And I'm really excited about what my data teams are doing right now as they collaborate with our really innovative Board of Education. All right, so tell us a little bit about your uh, really creative data teams and what they're collaborating on and uh, what, what you're building out there. Okay, well, let me give everyone a little bit of a background. So um, as most of you know, every state has an accountability system, right? There is a system that measures your academic performance, no matter what state you are in. But our Board of Education, 20 plus years ago, wanted to have more than that system of accountability. As we all know as professionals, this is our core business is learning and teaching. Our core business is academics, but we're also very, very much a business. Um, we have finance that we have to monitor and measure. We have business operations that we monitor and measure. We have stakeholder input that uh, might have to do with HR or uh, surveys that we do with our, with our parents and, and students and families. So, 20 plus years ago, our Board of Education came across some research that two Harvard professors put together. Their names were Kaplan and Norton, and this was published in 1992 in the Harvard Business Review. Uh, most of us know and respect that journal. In this uh, article, they described using a balanced scorecard to track business metrics. And really what they were, the target audience was the P&Ls, the profit and loss um, measurements for most of industry, not really education. But our board looked at this research and said, you know what, we, we want more than just academics. We want to measure areas of our business. So, 22 years ago, they stood up a balanced scorecard and they were looking at specific metrics around those areas I mentioned, not just academics, but also finance, business operations and stakeholder input. Um, over time, over the last 20 years, it evolved into them tracking about 166 different metrics and they had specific objectives around it and so on. But Doug, the format was like an Excel sheet. And then it was point in time data. So we captured it one time a year. We, uh, from that Excel document, we created a nine page PDF with probably 150 rows of data per sheet. Uh, we put this out every year for our public and our board members use that document to sort of track because this, again, the state 
tracks accountability and we very much care where we fall in in their targets but our board of education expects us to meet state standards and go above and beyond so they would use this excel document two years ago uh, the uh, executive director of strategy and governance for our school district and myself began to collaborate around evolving the balanced scorecard and that PDF into a modern data dashboard. So we began leveraging Microsoft's Power BI to create, to, to, we captured the data and then we created visualizations that were not only, we still have some point in time data points because you only take an assessment, like a, a, a state assessment once a year. So that's still considered point in time. But when and where possible, the data on the dashboard is updated nightly to give our leaders a chance to use that data to inform decisions. But Doug, last night we did something, we went a step further and now we have published the um, a public view of the dashboard. So now we have lots of data available for the public in a modern Power BI dashboard format. So one of the things that you mentioned, right? So 167 different pieces of data, uh, over 100,000 uh, folks that you're uh, working with serving in the school districts, that's 16 million plus 17 million like data points for every for every like one point in time right so we're talking about a ton of data 167 data points probably sounds like um a lot to somebody who doesn't work in and around education and education data a lot can you give us just a couple examples of things um, that you are measuring, a couple examples of things that go into that 167 data points. Right, well, um, I, if we can, I have a screenshot of one of the pages that is inside of our learning and growth bucket. Um, sure. What you're seeing now is one of four pages, you can barely see it down at the bottom, but this is one of four pages of data related to college and career readiness. So on this one page, you're seeing four data visualizations. In the upper left, you're seeing a graph that kind of look like, looks like a mountain. Um, and I want to draw the uh, viewer's attention to that tiny little clock icon. If you see where 2019 is on that mountain, yeah, thanks. Um, that clock icon represents the fact that this is data that is refreshed nightly because the students enrolled in a virtual course can change every day. So this data is updated nightly. If you look in the upper right, you'll see a data visualization in a, in a simple column um, format for grade 12 students completing a pathway. And the camera icon where the mouse is hovered over right now represents that this is point in time data. We captured this at a specific time. Uh, and then, you know, again, you could look at all four. Uh, the one in the lower left has a camera. It's, it is a snapshot of grade nine students on track. And then in the lower right is another clock. We update that nightly. Um, another thing that we do for our, our end users, Doug, is we give them sort of the calculations. How did you get this math? You know, who do you count when you're looking at this? Right. In the really far lower left-hand corner are three icons. One of them looks like a little I. It stands for information. And if you click on this, this big overlay comes up and it's different for every page. And it, it tells the end user, as you're seeing on the screen, what are the business rules for this data point? You know, who's involved in this? particular data uh, visualization 
how did you calculate? Look, there's a math formula on the page. <laughs> grade nine students divided by a total of grade nine students. Um, so we think that that is really powerful for the end user to see how we calculate. Uh, if we go back to that page, the next icon shows a question mark. It's right next to that little eye. And if you click there, it just shows you how to navigate Power BI. We have literally embedded Power BI into the web pages and the question mark just helps them navigate. And then finally, I love this, um, Doug. If you click on the AZ, the AZ is a acronym dictionary. Our alphabet oh, soup. I know, educators, we just love acronyms and it can be very difficult and uh, honestly daunting for um, our families to kind of sift through all of that. If I can draw your attention under the general section, um, the acronym SEC is Services for Exceptional Children. If you go back to our visualization, Doug, um, you'll notice that SEC is actually one of the filters on the lower left hand side. The public can filter by any of these. So by selecting why, we can only see students um, uh, services for exceptional services for exceptional children involved in this data set. Uh, but it's all aggregate. So Doug, a really important part, uh, you know, point that I want to make is that we protect student level data. The only thing an end user will see is aggregate data. Um, if you were to choose some filters and then for, you know, let's say I chose a school and let's say I chose SEC, um, but there were 10 or fewer SEC students at that school, we would not display any data. We use the too few students rule. Um, it, it is best practice when you're um, looking to protect student data privacy. And so that is a very important part of our work is testing uh, to make sure we've protected student data and, uh, you know, but still allowing this really powerful transparency for our public and giving our board members these uh, powerful metrics to measure our success. So, so talk to me a little bit, like we, we saw the dashboard, you know, it's, it's live as I click through it and I change the filters, you know, that data is changing so that I can kind of move in and out of it. Um, I know we've seen, um, you know, schools maybe not all using the balanced scorecard, but we've seen these data visualizations um, through things like Power BI and some other platforms becoming more popular. What, what is the why, right, for schools that are looking at this and saying, that seems like so much work. First of all, <laughs> yes. Second of all, um, what, is the, what is the why behind it and sort of the desired um, outcome of building this for you all? Okay, well, let me be clear. This, this balance scorecard does belong to our Board of Education. And so they have uh, literally tasked us with making sure these metrics are available. They, they again, they feel like these metrics help inform their decisions, you know, inform their approvals for certain purchases even, and that it also provides that transparency to, to the public. We're not, we're not hoarding or hiding any data. Here it is. But I can also tell you about a long-term why, Doug. Uh, this past, in December, our five-year strategic plan expired. So it's, it's time for a new strategic plan. And as Dr. Ryan Moore and I began to collaborate, he's strategy and I have the data teams, one of our, um, one of our hopes is that we begin to align our strategy for the district with the metrics we are using to show that we have been successful with that strategy. So, so it's inspecting what you expect is the big why. There you go. I mean, inspecting what you expect. We, if we needed a soundbite, we have now got it for today. Um, 
So shockingly, we're already at time. Um, I want to thank you so much. But before we go, is there anything else you want to throw out there or share about um, this project, the process, or the work that you're doing? Yeah. Well, Doug, I just want to um, say to the viewers, please feel free to look at our the total body of our balance scorecard. If you navigate to the Fulton County Schools website, at the top, there'll be a link to board. As I mentioned, this belongs to our board. And under that page, you'll see a link to our balance scorecard. A lot of great background information there, uh, describes our functional areas. And there you will find four functional areas, 17 links to different sections, 50 different pages and hundreds of metrics. I am super proud of the work that we've done in-house. Our team, our family, our Fulton County data teams, data scientists, super proud of their work. And I'm happy to talk to anybody who is interested in this kind of project. Well, thank you so much once again. And we'll have to have you back after the next big project. Would love to. Thanks a lot. Bye. Thanks for joining us today. Don't forget to like and subscribe so that you can be notified whenever we post new content. Looking forward to seeing you next time.